Okay, so look where we're at. They're good. They're bent over at the waist, forehead to forehead, right? Keep your right pec over your right knee. Now, I want you to stand up pretty tall in a bad stance. A little taller. Good. So, this guy's stance is my target. That's what I'm shooting on. So, some of us struggle in wrestling because you let everybody shoot on you. And you don't even realize it. Good, you guys can relax for a second. So, if my stance is your target and I get a great big old stance like a basketball player, everybody can wrestle me. If you get into a real low, tight, world-class, small wrestling stance, big stance, big opportunity, small stance, small opportunity. If it's small opportunity, it requires a better wrestler. If there's small opportunity to pass the football, to th it takes a great quarterback to be able to consistently be, you know, score touchdowns, right? If the basketball hoop was as big around as a barrel, we could all play basketball. Even if we suck, we can play basketball. But it's not. The basketball hoop is just slightly bigger than a basketball, so only... 5% of the kids in America can play basketball and get a college scholarship because there's a lot of skill involved. Well, see, my stance is whatever I want it to be. The soccer net is the same size. The basketball hoop is the same size. So get back in the stance, guys. I'm going to demo here. So if, you, if, 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 if he's in a big stance... He doesn't even have to be a very good wrestler to shoot on him. Don't you want to take 95% of America and say, you can't wrestle me? Yeah. Just get in a low stance and you alleviate 95% of the, the competition because they don't practice enough. They, they just don't. They're just, they don't have the skill. Secondly, good. So when this guy's in a very good stance... He's better offensively too. So is he. So the one stance that takes away your opponent's opportunity, think about a track runner getting ready to uh, explode off of the line. Think about a coiled up snake. A coiled up snake is dangerous, ready to strike. A snake that's not coiled up can't hurt you. So you want to be in a low tight stance we say feet wide, touch a mat, don't let them read your shirt, hairline to hairline, keep your left heel behind your left back hip pocket, right pick over right knee, don't let them read your shirt, right? We lean on our opponent a little bit. When I'm there, I'm better offensively and also defensively, okay? So when you're drilling, good, you guys relax. If I'm drilling against an opponent, who, a partner who's standing up in a big tall stance, kind of like a basketball player, right? They're in a stance, but it's a big stance, kind of like an outfielder in baseball, right? That's a wrestling stance that some of us use. If you're drilling on that opponent, you're literally wasting your time. You wouldn't, you wouldn't practice basketball on a basketball hoop that's as big around as a, a, a big barrel, would you? No. You'd say, coach, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, we're practicing basketball. And you'd say, can you at least put up a target that I have to hit in a, in a state tournament? You're wasting my time, coach. But see, we waste our own time because we let our opponent stand straight up and down. And then we, we hit a couple hundred thousand reps of technique and drills over the course of a career. And then we get into big matches. We wonder why we can't score. And we drill from a big, tall stance. Then in a match, we try to hunker down in a low stance like those guys were. It's a different athlete to move and fake and circle and sprawl and react and tie up and direction change from a low stance requires a different feel. It's a different kind of an athlete. When you're standing up in like a stance like a basketball player and you're moving and sprawling and reacting from there, it doesn't require much athleticism. So... Some people say that wrestling is 90% mental. Wrestling might be 90% stance because your confidence comes from not getting your head beat in, right? 
It's hard to get taken down 37 times of practice against kids who don't even qualify for the state tournament and expect to be confident. If you just get into a stance like magic, you're going to score more points because you're a coiled up snake. You're a better athlete from there. And you're not going to give up many takedowns because you're in a great stance. And you start winning more. And now you start beating state medalists and state champs in practice. And you're like, holy cow, maybe I am pretty good. Some of us, I will say this. We like to say best dance in America. That's been a theme of ours for 25 years. Our goal is to have the best dance in America. We talk about position-based wrestling. Wrestle off a solid position. Don't move around a lot. Be patient. Wrestle in sprints. Sprints of action, flurries of action. Most elite wrestlers do that. They don't move around nonstop like a spaz, okay? Some guys can. All right. Some people can move a lot, but most of us can't. Most wrestlers wrestle in sprints. So... When you're talking about position-based wrestling, because remember, your stance, what's his stance doing? It makes him faster, it makes him stronger, and it limits what his opponent can do to him. So offensively, I'm in a faster stance. I'm in a faster position and a stronger position when I'm in a stance. And I also minim minimize what my opponent can do to me. So... For the rest of your career, whether you come back to this camp or not, I want you to really focus on having the best stance in America and wrestling from a stance. And it's like a catalyst, like a little spark that starts a big fire. It's, it's going to jumpstart your career, guys. Okay? Stance is more important than anything. But more important than wrestling technique, more important than anything. I will say this one last thing. Zeke Jones, who took over Team USA about 15, 18 years ago and turned it around, he, well, I chatted with him quite a few times. He sent me some CD ROMs and stuff of like the technique and stuff that the world class guys were using. And he said this they went through the Olympics, the World Championships, the Russian Nationals, the US Open, the Asian Games, and the European Championships, those six tournaments. And they went back for five years. And every big high level match, they broke down every high level match of all of those six tournaments for five years. And they have a chart. Big poster boards all over the office. Every tie-up, every shot, every re-attack, every, every attack. What's the number one finish use? What's the number one setup? What's the number one leg attacks? He said, before we can turn Team USA around, we got to know what the best um, men and women in the world are doing. And they mapped it all out. And it was thousands of hours of wrestling matches they watched. And they broke them down. And he said, the number one thing we found that Team USA needs to do is getting a better stance. So if that's, and we're talking NCAA champs, NCAA All-Americans who are winning the US Open, making the world teams, top six, top 10 in Team USA, wrestling overseas, beating Olympians, beating uh, the best guys in the world. And so we're talking about great wrestlers. And if Zeke said, the number one thing Team USA needs to do after thousands of hours of mapping out Every tie up, every attack, every finish, every attempt of the best wrestlers on planet Earth of the top six tournaments in the world for the past five years, the number one thing he said was America needs a better stance. Okay? And I like to hear that because that's been our focus since 1999 is to be position based wrestling. Okay? Everything we do based is based off of world class position. And positioning is what? It makes me faster, stronger, limits what my opponent can do to me. Whether I'm on top, whether I'm on bottom, front headlock position, pinning position, uh, front headlock defense position, uh, leg attack, sprawl de defense, all right? Feet wide, chest tight, knees off the mat, uh, arch till it hurts. That's our four steps for hip pressure defense. We also push and slide when needed. We'll go over that too. So we have core positioning dr skills and drills from all of these areas. But as far as stance is concerned, that's what really screws us up sometimes. Okay, so let's get in a stance. We're going to go one more time. I'll do one walkthrough. Break on two. One, two. Here we go. Set. Five, four, three, two, one.